This is probably a terrible idea. But you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway. Hello everyone! Welcome to Regrowth! As you can see, I am in the middle of something because I am going to need nether stars to make a beacon to fight- what the heck? Hey! Hey! Don't you run away from me! What did you say about me, you little- I will have you know. Come on. Come on. Oh, you can't even hit me. You're nothing. You are nothing, sir. <laughs> Until I walk into water. Yeah. Oh, oh, what's that? Come on. Yeah. I might have overprepared for that with the whole, you know, ultimate potion and the flask of absorption that he didn't even run out and making all that Tinker Construct heart canisters from all those red hearts that I got and making all these golden block notch apples. Yeah, I, I overprepared. <sighs> But it still felt damn good. <laughs> hmm. I was I was kind of hoping he would drop some pride shards, cause that's another thing that I really want. Actually, you know what? I think I might just fight another wither. Yeah. And yes, it does look like vanilla speed. I think someone was talking to me about my soldier and her sash, and it got me wondering. It does look like vanilla speed enchant does stack with Sojourner's sash. Yeah, let's get this prepped. One and two and drink. And eat. And be merry. Wait, does Regen 2 get rid of my Regen 1? Son of a bitch, it does. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Because, as we saw, I did not particularly need it. Yeah. I think with Sojourner Sash and Speed, he has trouble tracking me, so long as I strafe a little bit. And these throwing knives are serving pretty dang well. It's a bit of weird lag. But yeah, I can just tank him. It's no problem. Another yellow... No? No pride shards. Hmm. Attempt number three? Why not? Attempt number three. While we're here. So after farming it a few more times, I finally decided to look it up, and it turns out that to get Pride Shards, you not only have to kill the, the Wither, but you have to kill it in the Nether. So I figured the interesting terrain might make this a somewhat more fun battle for y'all. Let's see. I didn't choose any particular area, I just kind of went a little bit away from the portal. So, let's go. Not really hit me, sir. But you are much harder to hit when I can't just back up all the time, too. Especially with a ceiling. And that lava you exposed right off the bat, that was bad luck. But still, you are just the wither. And you are nothing. Nothing. Nothing but tasty, tasty pride shards to get in my belly. Yeah. I want these things to make this thing. The Infernal Rod. That is a pretty good wand, just on its own. 
but I don't really want it just for the purposes of, you know, it, just as a wand. I want it because so long as it's in your inventory, you will not take wither damage. Yeah. That is pretty dang good. I want it. I need it. Ugh. God damn it, OBS. It just failed to record like a 10 minute video. God. Okay, so um, I, I finished the Infernal Rod. It was really easy. The only thing I really said of note is that the easiest source of the Superbia Essentia you need for it are these uh, are gold swords. Gold swords are. Uh, sword. Gold swords are an excellent source of superbia. Anyway, um, what else did I do? What else did I do? Um, I talked about how I am going to want to make void caps for that wand out of void metal, which is unlocked through the Eldritch tab. The Eldritch tab is something that I unlocked off camera and forgot to tell you about. You unlock it through the Eldritch Epiphany, which happens as a high-level warp effect. Yes, that is what I talked about, alluded to early on when I first talked about warp, when I said there are reasons you may want to warp yourself. If you go insane enough for long enough, eventually your mind reaches out, expands into realms unknown, and you gain forbidden knowledge. Namely, at first, the knowledge of how to construct void metal, which is like thaumium but better, and can be... Um, it, it kind of operates like Tinker's Construct, I think, where if you make a tool of it, you can repair it just by mashing a void metal ingot onto it. Anyway, void metal is made just by infusing seeds with a bunch of essentia. And it's kind of a messy process if you try and do it in the crucible. I mean, it can be done, but I wanted to make something a bit neater. So I made some alchemical constructs. Made some alchemical constructs, essentially out of a bunch of tubing, some V-filters, and a chunk of wood. I made two of those, put them on top of a crucible, and then gave it a little bit of magic to make this advanced alchemical furnace. This thing is the tier 2 crucible, really. Instead of accepting items directly, you pipe liquid essentia into it and it gives you perfect alchemy every time so we don't have to deal with flux goo anymore we just need to melt stuff down and have it on tap to pipe into this thing whenever we need to do alchemy and i searched through our book a little bit and i discovered something that i think will make it even easier i discovered these essentia pumps which apparently will allow me to pipe out Essentia through Essentia mirrors into this thing. Essentia mirrors are kind of range, uh, in default Thomcraft, they are kind of range extenders for the altar. Let's say that you have your jars set up somewhere remote but chunk loaded and they're out of range of the altar, you can have a mirror here within the altar's range and another mirror next to your jars. And the altar will be able to pipe Essentia through those mirrors. But I don't think that's really useful because the altar has such a nice big range and you don't need all that many jars to have a collection of everything. Um, but this mod will hopefully make those mirrors more useful. Anyway, the mirrors are just a bunch of basic materials. It's nothing hard, and I need to recharge my wands, so I went off camera to do that. I hope it got on film this time. So, I have got the Essentia pump assembled. You see it's just made out of a bunch of very simple ingredients. I've got the mirrors infused. I've been expanding the collection of jars and gradually upgrading them all to void jars. Had to farm lots of Perdicio V for that. 
Thank goodness the local nodes have tons of it. I'm just going to take myself some tubes and let's try this thing out. So, first, let's place down the Ascension Mirrors. This is technically not even going to require, you know, like they're in range of everything, but you know, okay. So, we put one down, and then I believe we need to bind the other one to it by sneak clicking, or is it just right clicking? Yeah, there it goes. Gets you this mirror with a graphic on it telling you that it's an output from some other place. Okay, so then let's put that down and let's see if I can figure this thing out. So do I put the pump on top of it and then a pipe out the back? That connects. It looks kind of weird. Maybe I have to put the mirror on. No, that doesn't attach, okay. Well, uh, let's just try it out. Let us just try it out. Um, I'll just grab a, I don't know. I have tons of water. I'll grab a uh, entropy shard. Let's see if we can make a balance shard. Okay. Okay. No. Why you know? You should, from what I've read about it, it should draw Ascension in when it detects suction. Mm. It will recognize the current suction of the system and draw the matching aspect from nearby mirrors. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe the tubing is wrong. Maybe it needs to connect on this side? No. Maybe it needs to... Hmm. Maybe the mirror has to be a little bit distant. There it goes! Now, why is it not? Do I need to... Hmm... You should not be creating aqua suction. Why? Uh, okay, I'm going to go and look for some tutorials on this thing. Figured it out. Figured it out on my own. So you remember how I told you that Essentia tubes can only carry one type of Essentia at a time? Yeah, it turns out that for the purposes of the Essentia pump, they aren't cleared when the suction changes. But fortunately, it can link directly to the machine and feed directly in there. So we can just do like this. Zoop. Yeah. So now we have easy alchemy. So long as we have enough junk in our jars, we can do things very, very easily. So now that I can do that, I'm going to just, I don't know, use this wheat to get some seeds to get some void metal. So, this is going to need Tenebra, which I have, Alienus, which I have, and Vacuous, which I forgot to melt. Vacuous is very, very easily, thankfully. Can just make, like, a whole ton of bowls. Okay, got a collection of vacuous. Let's make these void seeds. Zoop, zoop, zoop. I love how fast this thing is. Vacuous. Vacuous. There it goes. Just after I compliment you. Prove me wrong. God. I'm never going to talk to you again. How do you like that? So... You see that processing it like this gives us void seeds. 
that needs to be processed with metallum aspect, which is frickin' easy, it's everywhere, but it does have a couple of uses just on its own. Now it has exactly one use just on its own, and that's from witching gadgets. Yeah, this is just an intermediary product. I'm not even sure why it exists. Just put the metallum in the base recipe. Anyway, dupe. Void metal. In this pack, void metal can be used for Tinker's Tools. It has, it's an alternate path to getting the highest, well, the second highest mining level. Oh, by the way, I upgraded Sir Reginald to Osmium because it turned out to actually be faster than Manulian. I was misremembering. Anyway, void metal. I believe that, the, yeah, it has to be nuggified in order to make caps, no? Oh, I haven't researched the caps yet. Excuse me, pardon. Yes. Okay, well, that's easy enough. Let me, uh, I have a collection of paper right here. I might as well do this on camera. Some of you might not uh, get the point of the game, the mini game. So, let's see here. It's a pretty big research. It's void, alien, da da da. Okay, all these mostly link through void. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, because that links to magic. Magic links to void. Alien is void and darkness, so that links to void. So, how do we get that tied in? I could do entropy, order, and trade to link those. And I think for the rest I'm going to go the path of air because that's very easy. Link to air there, air there, air there, air there. Arbor. Arbor and Herba. Maybe not the most efficient path, but uh, yeah. Permanent warp for me. So, void caps are indeed made out of nuggets, and that is going to require a crep ton of Salus Mundus, which is thankfully much easier now that we have our advanced alchemy system. And that's just going to require that's going to require a lot of orum. I need a source of that um, of ethereal essence. There is something that we can use to help with that. And it's enter apocrypha, yes. We can make a Euclidaisy. This is a special Batania flower that will convert mana gradually into ethereal essence. It's relatively simple. I will need Aurum to get it, of course. So, let's look up. Do I know any other sources of Aurum? Sometimes a pack will put them in. Uh, not really. Crap. Because both those bath salts... Well, what does the bath salt require? What does the bath salt... Yeah, that requires Aurum to go into it, damn it. Okay, well, um... Eh, screw it. We can break one of these nodes. We can do that. Let's put this over in the Magical Forest, just see if we get anything good. Doop. Crap, we got something that's kind of good. Um, okay, one thing you should note. If you put nodes too close together, because again, there are ways of moving them. If you put them too close together, they will start to feed on each other, and eventually one will dominate the other. And it'll start draining the V out of it. And remember, when they reach zero V, they can reach permanent damage. And eventually one node will eat the other. And it will gain a little bit of aspect permanently. So it is possible to go out and gather nodes from all over the world and gradually feed them to one super node. 
which you may want for some reasons. But there are easier ways of getting super nodes, anyway. That is just some base aspects, and it looks like it is actually a fading node. Yeah, some nodes have special things on them. I think fading means it will gradually fade, like it recharges super slowly and sometimes randomly loses an aspect. So this one can be our sacrifice. Boom. Yes, you get a little bit of ethereal essence of all the types it carried, and you see these contain a little bit of the aspect that they are plus Aurum. So that is one way of getting Aurum when you don't have a Euclid Daisy. Okay, I will just be melting down stuff and preparing that infusion. In case you were wondering, the Euclidaisy is considered to be a very high instability. I believe that there are uh, two levels above that, dangerous and insane. So this is like possibly the third highest level of instability. Base level eight, no problem. Oh, also I realized I was maybe wrong to make that living wood one. I would maybe be better off making a Dreamwood rod. I've looked up their recipes. They seem to be the same capacity 100, but I think the Dreamwood converts faster. So it's more or less just the same recipe, just with a Dreamwood and, and some more Essentia. So I will be doing that off camera. Yes. Euclidese. We are just going to take this pretty little thing that is looking at me over into our Batania area. And it is a very simple little device. You simply plunk it down near a mana pool. It will spark up. It accepts a redstone signal. So I can put a lever on it to turn it off. And every so often, it will spit out a couple of bits of uh, ethereal essence. And I believe it it will spit out all of them randomly, but it has a priority to spit out Aurum. Like, it spits this out half the time. So, I think what I am going to do is I am going to put a hopper hawk next to this thing. Um, oh yeah, I moved all the petals into there. One, two... Before. The recipe for a hopper hawk is engraved upon my mind now. Air, seed, redstone. Yes. Just like that. Doop, 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 doop. Yes, I'm going to put a hopper hawk, and actually I might move this a little bit. I might put this... So let's put it over here. I believe its range should be able to reach the uh, storage pools. Yes, you see it sparking up. And I will just take my wand and make sure... Yeah, it's on the submissive pool right now. Let's put it on the central storage pool. Can it reach? No, it cannot. Oh well, submissive pool is fine. So never mind. Okay, so, and I need another piece of dirt. Excuse me. Hmm, also sparking. Oh well. So I'll put you on there, and I will put an item frame on. I said I will put... Does this not accept item frames? Yes, it does. Okay. Now, if you have an item frame on a thing that... Uh, well, I think it has to be... Perfect. So let me set this to function mode. And, yeah, pick up only items in frames. That means that if there is an item frame on the thing that the Hopper Hawk is trying to put into, it will only pick up those items. And... Ethereal shards should be or dictionaried. 
Hum. Okay. Pick up only items not in frames. Pick up any items. I guess that it doesn't do or dictionary. I could have sworn it did. Oh well, never mind. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna have to bind that Hopper Hawk to a pool, an empty pool, just so that it does not eat even more mana. That's easy enough. I can just put that underground. Put this back into bind mode. Yeah, just put that right there. Bind you to it. Clear you out. Bind you again, just to make sure. Okay, there we go. And whenever I need Aurum, I can just come in and turn this Euclid Daisy on for a couple of minutes. But I believe that should actually be enough Aurum for the moment. Yeah. Actually, I think I'll just burn all these. Okay. I will get that Dreamwood rod built, and I will get back to you in a minute. In a, in a minute. Menomina. Oh yes, before I forget, I want to put labels on all of my void jars. Labels are a bit like drawer keys. They will ensure that even when the jar is empty, that jar is prioritized for filling of that type, and it can only accept that type. So if you have a blank jar label and you put it on a jar with Essentia in it, it gains that Essentia type. You can also take a file and sample a bit of Essentia from it. Files are the way of uh, moving Essentia around manually just on your own. And you can program them with that. And it doesn't even cost any of the Essentia dupe. Yes, I'm just putting that on all of my void jars, and eventually I want a collection of void jars for each of the essences so I can burn and melt and do all the things without ever having to worry about it. Actually, while making that Dreamwood rod, or more accurately, while making the rune crafting for it, I realized that I could still get some use out of this living wood one. I might as well do the other. Yes, and, uh, to, to use the Living Wood Rod, you have to activate it in a mana pool like you just saw. And I think it actually takes a fair whack of mana to do, so it's a good thing we have that mana gen. So, I'm going to take that and I'm just going to put on mana seal caps. These are really, really simple. And then, um, why isn't it... Oh, they're inert. They need to be activated. What does that take? That just takes some mana. Easy peasy. Yes, Mana Steel Caps are actually as good as Thaumium Caps, and much easier to make. So, if you're playing the home game, you can just make those and it's really, really easy. Especially if you've made yourself a good source of mana. So, we can take those, we can put them on our Living Wood Rod, and I'm going to need some more magic. Of course I am. Okay, this time for real for real. Mana Steel Entwined Living Wood, Rom Living Wood Wand. Capacity 100, let's see how fast it charges. 4v, 5. I'm guessing that's about 1 per second. So let's see how bad the mana drain is. Let me just uh, take my wand. And my meta mirror is, well, my meta mirror is bound to one of the dominant pools. So I'll have to view it down here. Yeah, that would be where the draw is. So let's recharge. Ah, good. It recharges so long as it's in my hotbar, apparently. Well, 
I guess I'll leave it for a few minutes and I'll see if it's faster than the recharge rate. But if not, it's not a huge deal. Because my wand will fill up and then it'll be done. And I have Buku mana in storage. So, this Living Wood Rod has capacity 100, and these Mana Seal Caps give me the same 90% V discount rate as the uh, Thaumium Caps. But the Mana Seal Caps have the bonus of making the uh, Living Woods. Okay, the Living Wood Rod has the native ability to do what you're seeing here, where it's converting mana into V. The Mana Steel Caps make that mana rate a little bit better. And the Elementium Caps I'm working on for the Dreamwood Rod should be even better still, and the Dreamwood Rod should fill up even faster, even though it is still just capacity 100. So I'm thinking this might be a good... Yeah, this is a good pair of wands for us to use. The final thing, I, I might later on make a Dreamwood Staff. Staves are just like, uh, they're just wands, except they cannot go in a crafting table. So they are only for your personal use. Actually, let's look at that. Is it going even when it's... Actually, that's 80% V cost. Oh, yeah, it's 80% on both. Okay. And it looks like it only goes when it's on your hotbar. Still, that's not too bad. Okay. Well, uh, back to runecrafting for me. That was a neat little aside. Oh. Oh, this is freaky. The mana mirrors are screwing up the, the lines of goop. It's not affecting it mechanically, but... Oh. Ugh. Actually, I, I don't think I checked. Is that mana mirror going to be a problem for our stability? No. Yeah, it's, it's not causing any problems or anything, but it looks so freaky freaky. Freaky freaky freaky. Okay, charge up the next one. I might as well stay on camera, this won't take long. Okay, Vacuos, Alienis. Maybe I need... Nope, I had enough. Yes, the goop. The goop is gorping. The gloople glarp. Globble gloob. Gooble gobble gooble gobble. One of us, one of us. Okay. And then I just this and again this is not strictly necessary just having the infernal rod in my inventory is enough to protect me from wither but i mean i might as well have it in my yeah and you see this is capacity 150 and i think those void steel caps they are going to give me oh so good yeah that's 70 percent it's getting down there I think that with the top tier Thaumaturge's equipment set and a Void Steel Wand, it's possible to get down to 50% V cost. But I think that outside of some creative only items, that's as low as it goes. Still, that's not bad. And uh, yeah, filling the Mana Steel, uh, filling the Living Wood Rond. It completely that costs about a half a mana pool so it is not cheap but hopefully the dreamwood and elementium one will be cheaper okay so we have our wither protection we have our uh, new source of magic 
we have some Wither Stars. Nether Stars, excuse me. From the Wither. Yes. So the first thing I think I want to do, actually, is I want to make a better Builder's Wand. This unbreakable wand has a freaky freaky huge range. And you can actually combine these with, yeah, you can just, you can get it up to ludicrous levels. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. But more importantly, it does not take durability damage. You can use it forever. So that is just my new friend until the end. Next up, I am going to need to make a beacon. It's just the same recipe as vanilla. And I'm not sure if there's any other uses. The Celestial Mirror for Mare Culture. Null Catalyst. Huh. Okay, it has, it has a couple of uses that we'll get into. But I think... Eh, well, maybe I'll have to kill some more withers. But you saw that that is not a challenge. So I just need some... One, two, three, four, five. And I need three obsidian. And that will get us a new Ms. Mavis. Lovely, lovely. Okay, now, next I am going to need some special pylons that go around it. I'm going to need these pretty pink Gaia pylons, which is just some Alfheim ingredients around a regular mana pylon, which is fairly simple to make. Actually... I'm no longer doing magic. I should put my armor back on. We all know what happens when you are not wearing your armor. Yes. In yeah. Yes. Oh, and in, in case you were wondering, these mana pylons do actually have a use other than just looking pretty. These things are uh, enchanting table enhancements. And just like, you know how you have to put down bookcases to get the level 30? These things, if I put them down, you see they spark up. Well, I think they spark up anyway. I mean, yeah, they are just sparkly. But this should, if I get a book or something, book or something, they should show me, yeah, it goes up to five. And if I put a couple more down, goes up to eight. They're a bit more compact than bookcases. And I think that the uh, Gaia pylons or the, and the Natura pylons are even soupier. They give you more souping up. But yes, that is something that I am not really going to use them for. I do not do vanilla enchanting very often. Okay. Got those. Hmm. And look at that. It works as an infusion stabilizer, too. I bet the mana pylons do as well. Yeah, there's a billion things out there that work as infusion stabilizers. Okay, and finally we are going to need... I'll just use iron. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because this does need to be a proper working beacon. So let's just head out a little ways. Just into the area where we were fighting the visitor. This is a nice flat looking bit of ground. And I am going to take my book binder and look in the Lexica Britannia. And let's see here. Da, 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 da. No, I think it's under Alpha Mancy. Ritual of Gaia. Visualize. Okay, let's put that right inset into the ground right here.
do note that these Gaia pylons need to be floating up off the ground one space in order to properly match up their expected block. Ugh. I can remember the days when we didn't have this visualization feature and you had to count it out by hand. It was, uh, it was, oh, it was, oh. Bat. Do I get wool of bat? Come on. Come on. Get back here, you. Oh, fine. Be that way. Mm hmm? You have made a grave mistake! I did not get wool of bat. Damn. Okay, and. You know what? I think I am going to go and get some potions brewed. BRB. Okay, let's do this thing. Got me absorption. Got me ultima potion. Got me my noach apples. Let us go. Okay. Hey, you and me, we must have words. What are you the guardian of? Guardian of Gaia, right? Well, look around you. What does this look like to you? You know what this looks like to me? This looks like you weren't doing your goddamn job. Yeah, I'm calling you out on this, Buster. You know, if you read the, the lore in the quest book, this is the fault of the frickin' pigmen. All those hell portals? Yeah. That's where they came in and they started, like, mining up the earth. And all this blasted, this blasted wasteland is a side effect of those hell portals. So, when they were opening those up, where the hell were you? What were you doing sitting around with your thumb up your incorporeal ass, huh? Yeah. You know what you're the guardian of now? You are the guardian of my shiny titanium dick. That's about what you're worth right now. No, you are not worth that, mister. You are worth less than that. Look at that. You just got through my first frickin' layer of shielding. I'm not even re wearing the recommended armor set. The quest book, or the Lexica Botania recommends that I wear Elementium armor, and it recommends I have a Terra Steel sword. So that, you know, I can track you down with all your hopping around. But I don't even need that, because I have no knockback, I take no wither, you have nothing on me, I can just run after you and kill you. Because you are a little bitch who does not do his job. Now are you going to start, f are you going to stop farting around up there, or are you going to, yeah. Here you go. Okay, time to die, mister. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come close. Okay, don't. I'll come to you. Oh? Ugh, she gets faster. So annoying. Okay, where you at? Where you at? There you at. Yeah. Huh. Guardian, my ass. He didn't even get through two things of shielding. God. Disappointed. Uh, well, that was fun. Well, that was the Guardian of Gaia for y'all. There is a second tier of him, because now that we have this Gaia spirit, we can infuse it into Terra Steel. Yeah, 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 corporea stuff. I've never used corporea. We can we can infuse it to make this Gaia spirit ingot, and that'll give us a second tier of him. Who is, eh? Honestly, he's not that much tougher. All that he does is he teleports twice as fast. He shoots things at you, and he's just annoying. Really, annoying describes him as it is. Mm. Anyway, this, the tier 2 one will drop even more Gaia Spirit, and he will, um, he will drop relics that are very, very useful. Was defeating him a quest? I think defeating him might have been a quest. Let's see. Feels no. 
reels? Maybe. Oh, I have to make the terrestrial blade and all that blah 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 blah. Oh, and I didn't make all the sparks yet. Um, isolated isolates it from all spark interactions and dispersive causes it to fill mana tablets. Useful if I was using a mana tablet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try making that Elementium set and I'll see if I still have the quest or if I have to kill the Guardian again. BRB. Here's a fun little thing I decided to do. I had a bit of a research breakthrough. At one point, I scanned, uh, yes, under Artifice, I scanned an angry zombie, the special Thomcraft zombies that have a higher chance of dropping rotten brains. That gave me the research for brain in a jar. So remember, scan all the things. Once I researched that, I got the research for infusion enchantment. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. This allows you to use materials and essentia to put special enchants on your armor. And yeah, it lets you actually choose your vanilla enchants. You can have haste and protection and all that stuff. So I'm going to soup up my uh, Terra Steel helmet here with a special enchant from Thalmic Esoterica. I'm going to give it Night Vision. Now. Notice in the book that this says 16168, but there's a special thing about enchantments. The, the more enchanted the piece of armor you're trying to put another enchant on, the more it costs. So we see with our Alembic, with our uh, Abacus here, yeah, 1.4 times the amount of Essentia, so it's going to cost 22 and all that. Thankfully, that is all very, very easy. Wom. And yeah, it also costs XP, and the altar itself hurts you when it sucks it out of your living brain. So you have to be a little bit careful. And I think that if you don't have enough XP, it'll just keep on sucking. Like, like when, when you've already, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it, 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 it can try to kill you. So be careful when you're enchanting with the altar. But you can get some pretty cool stuff with it. Especially with all the Thomcraft add-ons. Anyway, if you noticed, Thomcraft itself adds the Repair Enchant. That will suck V from your wand to repair durability on armor and tools. And the higher the level you put on it, the more you get. Yes, protection for a night vision. So I believe, yep, I put it on. I get night vision permanently. Um, I know that not everyone likes that, but I do like it. And I think I will be sticking with it. And the Terra Steel armor is not the final set of armor I will be wearing. I have plans, glorious, glorious plans. But... I think that the armor that I will be wearing in the end will have night vision natively. So it's something that I need to get used to. Anyway, that was just an aside. Okay, everything is assembled. Elementium kissed Dreamwood wand. So let's take that, and that very nearly drained the Mana Steel one, and let's see if they A, both charge at the same time, and B... Yeah, that's charging. And is that charging? That is charging. Okay, so let's compare their rates. Actually, maybe maybe having them both in the hot bar is causing interference. Let's see here. So if I have it out here, uh, doop, uh, doop. I don't know. It's maybe a little bit faster. Uh, doop. Okay, let's compare that rate. Uh, Dupe. Uh, Dupe. Okay, yeah. I'd say that the, maybe the Elementium is, or the Dreamwood is about twice as fast. Hello. How did that happen? Oh, you know what it is? I must have got Thaumaria and not noticed. Thaumaria is a warp effect where uh, you um, leave puddles. <clears throat> so, 
Now let us compare the mana draw rate. Get up my wand. Okay. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. Eh. Okay, so that's fairly slow. And yeah, that's still fairly slow. These mana pools are freaking immense. It's kind of hard to measure. And Vasky has a fear of numbers in their UI, so. Hmm. Well, the most important thing is that now we have two wands that are capable of charging just from our mana system. So I can have one in the table, one in my hand, swap them out when one gets empty. And actually, let's compare 70. Yep, the Elementium is even better. Maybe I'll make another Dreamwood Wand instead of, eh, it's not a huge deal. They're both capacity 100. If the, if the Dreamwood went up to 150, then yeah, I, that would be a deciding factor. Okay, so... Today we have done lots and lots and lots of lovely, lovely magic. We have done all the meltiness and all the gloopiness. Hmm. What are we going to do next? Well, next up, I have a bit of a choice to make. I could start to work on applied energistics. There is nothing stopping me now from making these inscriber presses. And there is nothing stopping me from making all the calculation presses and all of that. And there is nothing stopping me from making all the basics of its, um, of its industry. I think the only thing that's really going to stop me, that's going to slow me down, excuse me, nothing's going to stop me now, don't stop me now, is I'm going to need loads and loads of chipsets, and I'm going to need, yeah, diamond, gold, and quartz. And I am going to need, um, I think for these circuits, yeah, I'm going to need to make some thermionic fabricators. And I'm going to need to make these electron tubes for each of these processors because the, they are very, very expensive in this pack. But that is... Well, the thermionic fabricators are going to be a bit slow. They are kind of a slow processing chain. And, uh, I don't know. I think the big thing is I am going to need to leave those chipsets all a-cooking. Like, I'm going to have to leave hundreds upon hundreds of them just on the grill. So I think I'm going to do that. And next episode, while that is cooking, next episode, we will be doing some blood magic. Yeah, that's an idea. Because blood magic is another one of those hurry up and wait type situations. So I will have two things to juggle that are moving relatively slowly, and hopefully that'll give me a feeling of progress as they both progress. So, next time on Regrowth. Blood magic. Bloody blueby. Blood. Blood. Blood!